Nigerian Center for Disease Control on Sunday confirmed 248 new COVID-19 cases in Nigeria, bringing the total to 4,399. According to the agency, Nigeria also recorded 17 more deaths from the pandemic, taking the country's death toll to 143, with total recoveries rising to 778. 81 of the new cases were in Lagos State, 35 in Jigawa, while Borno and Kano states each had 26 new confirmed cases. 20 new cases were also confirmed for Bauchi, 13 in the Federal Capital Territory Abuja, 12 in Edo, 10 in Sokoto, and 7 in Zampara. Kwara and Kebi each had four new cases. Gumbe, Taraba, Ugun, and Ekiti each had two cases, while Oshun and Bayosa had a case each. Joining us live in the studio is Dr. Eugene Musu of United Hearts to take a look at what is going on. Good morning, Dr. Eugene. Good morning. And it's good to have you. Uh, Thank you. Now we hear about chloroquine and, you know, the test uh, we're trying to, trying out some vaccines and mm. it's the whole conversation around chloroquine. Mm. What do we know about that? Um, first of all, uh, thanks for having me. First of all, chloroquine has been known in this part of the world for treating malaria. And also chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine um, you know, have been used over the years for some autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. So we know that chloroquine uh, has some antiviral activity. It can decrease viral replication and also chloroquine can uh, affect the immune response of the body. So it, it, it's an immune modulating agent. So from some tests done in vitro outside the body in test tubes, we know those things have been confirmed. So there are certain um, trials, reports that we have that chloroquine has been successfully used to treat COVID-19 infection. Mm. Um, however, some of those things are small numbers and they were not randomized clinical trials. Randomized double-blind trials are the standard way to confirm the effectiveness and safety of medications. Right. However, COVID-19 infection is a new infection. We don't have any approved treatment. So it was reasonable to allow it for some use. Mm -hmm. So it, it did not go through the normal process, but in this case, it's, it has been approved for some use. We have to be very careful. This medication, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, is not meant for self-medication. Right. To go to the pharmacy and just take it. Mm -hmm. So there are certain groups of people that should be careful using it because of complications. I'm going to mention just three you know, complications that people should be aware before they rush to use chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. Right. Uh, number one is cardiac arrhythmias, irregular heartbeat that can be very deadly. So it, it occurs because of change in the e ECG, the interval between the Q wave and the T wave is prolonged. There are some conditions that exist already that prolong the QT interval. For example, if you have low potassium, low mm -hmm. potassium is common for people with hypertension and people that are taking diuretics like moderatic, your potassium can be very low. And when your potassium is low, your QT interval is already prolonged. So mm. if you take these medications, you can actually have serious deadly complication. And there are other medications too, like um, um, some an antibiotic Zitromax, some you know, quinolines like ciprofloxacin, those things can affect your QT interval. Right. If you have low magnesium, so those things are ways that, you know, um, this can give heart arrhythmias and kill you. Mm. The second thing is hemolytic anemia. There are some people that have GCSPD deficiency. This is deficiency of enzymes that is found inside the red blood cells, the red blood cells. Right. So if you have GCSPD deficiency, certain medications, including chloroquine and hydro the chloroquine will destroy your you know, red blood cells. Mm. You have severe anemia and it has some other complications. And finally, um, the serious complication could be drug-drug interactions. Which there, means? There are certain drugs that when you are taking them and you take another, you know, the other drug, they have serious reaction that can cause serious um, side effects and uh, morbidity. Um, so you have to be aware, if you are taking digoxin, digoxin or digitalis is used for heart failure and arrhythmias. Mm -hmm. If you are taking amiodron, 
it can have those interactions with um, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. There are certain antacid and also insulin um, diabetic you know, drugs and also um, seizure and ant anti-epileptic drugs like for seizures. Right. So there are a couple of medications that can interact with that. So please be aware. Mm. Do not rush to the pharmacy and buy chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. If you need to use it, mm -hmm. your doctor can prescribe you the correct doses and monitor you for side effects. Mm -hmm. So, and, and also, there are clinical trials coming in Nigeria, right. uh, which is actually commendable. Because traditionally, most of these trials are done in Europe or United States, and then we just extrapolate the results mm -hmm. and start using them. It does not necessarily work, like uh, work you know, very well for us, because we don't know. We are not representing in the samples. So you may have 44,000 you know, people enrolled in a study, and you just have about 100 blacks. Mm. So, so, so you can't very easily extrapolate it. So by doing the trials ourselves, we will know how it works for us in sub-Saharan Africa. And our result might actually be better than what they have found in some other studies mm. elsewhere. So I think Lagos State Government should be commended for uh, doing such a double-blind clinical trial. Right. And that brings me to my next question, which is there's, there's been calls for, you know, uh, for us to begin to seek homegrown solutions. And some okay. people are you know, moving towards the herbal uh, medication and saying, mm. well, maybe we should try it. Are we at the stage where, yes, we should actually look in that direction? Or how are we able to manage it and be sure that, you know, like you said, we are on the right path? It's, it's very difficult to evaluate herbal medications because they are not standardized. What is the active ingredient? Has it been isolated? Has, has it been dosed? What is the proper dosage? Mm -hmm. So I know that you can get some leaves and then you try to you know, squash it and get out the, you know, the liquids and then you start, what is the correct amount? So, so before we can advocate for herbal treatment, we have to go to the labs, research, and purify those things identify the active chemicals that effective, quantify it, and dose it. That will be the first. So I, I think it will be premature to just say, ah, you can use these herbs mm -hmm. without going through that process because it's not scientific. Right. All right, let's talk up, stay on chloroquine. Let's just go back to chloroquine a bit and, you know, the warning to say do not rush into pharmacies or to hospitals and start getting this for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, is there any kind of restriction that needs to be placed now to say, well, because the tendency is that people would all rush out to now go and get it and you, you're, you're not sure why you're taking chloroquine. You know, so should there be a restriction or a ban to say unless you have certain, um, you know, go ahead or clearance, then this can be handed to you? You are talking, I'm, I'm just smiling. Yes, I can see you. This are. is Nigeria. You walk into any pharmacy, you self medicate, you say, Give me, you know, I have diarrhea, give me amoxicillin. You get it. I, I, I want ciprofloxacin. You get it. You, people abuse because it's not, even if there is regulation, it's not enforced. Mm. So you have a lot of chemists that have high school dropouts selling and dispensing. You, you, go to, you go to such places, you tell them, I have diarrhea, what do you recommend? Those people are not even pharmacists. Those, so we have to do the basic because even if we say you should not do it, we don't have, it's not regulated, it's not enforced. Mm -hmm. We should enforce, and that is why pharmacies are out of business in Nigeria. Because they go to school and study years of pharmacy, they come out, anybody goes into their territory, mm -hmm. you know, start dispensing and people go and buy. So we have a lot of work. I think we have to start there because the same thing, we are talking about chloroquine. Mm -hmm. We are having antibiotic resistance because when you abuse antibiotics, self-prescribe, underdosing, you don't even use it correctly, mm -hmm. you develop the resistance, and those medications are no longer effective. Then we have to develop another one, and they're more expensive. And we're having dangerous bacteria because of resistance. So, so it is good not to, I think what we need to emphasize is, please, for this epidemic and for this story about chloroquine, yes. it has not been subjected to proper clinical trials to approve it. Mm -hmm. There are reports that it works. 
Some people have said that it worked for them, mm -hmm. and some of the reports it did not work. So it's kind of, I would say, the data is suggestive that chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine works. However, be aware that mm -hmm. there are complications, especially if you belong to those groups you are talking about. Yes. If you're already on certain medications that can have drug-drug interaction mm -hmm. or medications that can affect your QT interval on the ECG that increases the risk of death from cardiac arrhythmias, be aware. And also the GCPD deficiency, people that don't even know they are deficient in those right. enzymes and they take it and their red blood cells mm -hmm. you know, break down and you know, they become anemic and have dark urine and sometimes they can actually have kidney mm -hmm. failure as a side effect of that. Right. So be careful, you know, if you need to use it, do it properly. Get a physician that will give you the proper dosage mm -hmm. and then monitor you for side effects. All right, thank you so very much, Doctor, for this uh, clarification that you're bringing because, yes, so many people may not know this. Now let's move on uh, finally to our last question, which is you are aware that, you know, the Commissioner for Health in Lagos State has projected that by July, August, we would have 120,000 cases, which is worrying, I mean, yes. for everyone. Now, in your opinion, what policies should the government be pursuing aggressively at this point so that, you know, we don't get to, indeed, that uh, July, August, where we have a hundred than 20,000 cases to contend with. Okay. First of all, let me just say this, okay? Um, we should be worried, and there are some aspects we should not be worried. Okay. Okay. Let me just reassure. We should not be worried or have excessive fear because COVID-19 is not a death sentence for majority of us. 81% of people that have covid infection, we have mild to moderate disease, and those people will recover. Right. So that is hope right there. Right. So we should not lose hope that this is the end of it. 81% mm -hmm. will have mild to moderate disease and will recover. Now, 14% will have severe disease, where they are very dysnic, they cannot breathe, mm -hmm. and they need oxygen to mm -hmm. support them. Now, 5% will be critical, they need ICU because they are in respiratory failure. And when they do go into ICU, 49% will die, will not survive it. Mm. So overall, the mortality of COVID is about 2 to 2.5%. You can say okay. 2 to 3%. 2 to 3% of the population will die from it. Okay. But most now, will survive. Most will survive. That is the hope. That is the good news. But we should be worried. Right. We should be worried because if we don't have, um, if we don't decrease the community spread, and we have a sudden Sorry. spike right. or surge in disease, then we're going to have a lot of sick people that we need that are severe and critical, and they will overwhelm, overwhelm our health System. services. Mm -hmm. Already, we are a resource-deprived country. We don't even have the PPEs and all that stuff. We don't even have enough critical care specialists to man people that we need such serious, you know, Attention. disease. So, so I, I think the best thing for us to do is to flatten the curve. And we can flatten the curve, the rate of rise, flatten the curve by following the recommended advice. Right. Okay. So we have to emphasize that. We have to, you know, follow the recommended advice. And it's simple, but we need to understand why we are doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, avoid people that are sick. If you see people that are having cough, fever, and all those things, you know, please stay away from them. Number two, if you are coughing or sneezing, cough into a tissue and throw it away. If you don't have cough into the inner mm -hmm. side of your elbow, that, that is very important. Then the next one is regular hand washing mm -hmm. with soap for 20 seconds. Do that. And then remember that COVID-19 can survive on surfaces for hours and days. So desktop, all those surfaces, tables, door handles, elevator buttons, light switches, try to clean them regularly, okay? The next one is please stay home. Don't go socializing, okay? Stay for, go out for essential services, going to look for food, going to your doctor, or trying to buy, you know, drugs, you know, mm -hmm. medications. Those are limit unnecessary travel, okay? Now, this is the, not a time 
to be going to crowded, you know, wedding receptions right. or, you know, big church services and all that stuff. Movie theaters, you know, crowded restaurants. We don't uh, even have them functioning. Okay. Yeah, it, even when they do, you know, relieve that, okay. COVID is still around with us. Mm. So we need to practice that. And then you, we need to wear face mask because face mask decreases the spread. So if I have it and I have, I don't spread it. And if you have it, you don't spread. So if we all we are in face masks, we're guarding ourselves. There is no, you know, there is no way it can spread. Mm. So these are the important things. And also, please, there are reports that people are sharing face masks. We should not do that. Right. Uh, and secondly, people should know that when you are infected, you need to isolate yourself. Mm. So if because we cannot do proper self isolation here. That's why they created isolation centers. In America and this, you know, people can isolate at home because they follow instructions. Uh, please, when you go, they understand, don't out of fear, you just escape and then run, run away, away into the copy and you're spreading it. Mm -hmm. And remember, even if you are young and you can, you are likely to survive it, what about your elderly, you know, parents Fortunately, and all those things? We have to wrap it here now. Thank you so very much, Dr. Eugene Wilson, for taking your time and piecing it out for us. Thank you.